session with reporters. Will it be tapering later in the year? And there was no real clarity on that. So what is the investor perception of what just happened today? I, I, I certainly think a lot of people are surprised. I think 10 to 15 billion of tapering was basically priced in. And I think people are now trying to figure out exactly where the Fed goes from here. But certainly there's no October press conference. So it seems unlikely um, that you do it in October. You could always call a, uh, a press conference or reschedule one, though that's a little bit complicated. Um, but it seems uh, unlikely that they do it in October. Maybe they do it in December. But I, you know, I think Bernanke's real concern was that the market was, was moving uh, in terms of rates higher and the Fed was uncomfortable with that. It just shows the difficulty of getting out of unconventional monetary policy. It's great when it works, but it's very challenging to get out of it. Eric, what does the Fed do now in terms of communicating going forward? And can the Fed really prevent any sort of market volatility? Clearly, in the months leading up to this, that was not the case. I think it's going to be increasingly challenging for the Fed. I, you know, m my first reaction, you know, b I'd say before the statement came out, was there was a, there was a lot of volatility for the past couple of months. Tapering was priced in. If they did a tapering light, uh, combined with the fact that the Summers is not going to be head of the Fed, volatility may fall. But now you actually see, may see volatility increase because we haven't done that first step of tapering yet. And I think right now, in the short term, markets will rally, bond markets will rally, dollar will sell off, stocks will go up, and then at some point the markets will begin to get concerned. So when does tapering actually begin? Uh, let's focus on that again. So the Fed is certainly in a very challenging spot, you know, given the nature of getting out of this unorthodox policy. Eric, let me ask you about the effectiveness of the Fed. This is always a debate, but clearly there's also concerns about what's happening in Washington and with fiscal policy. And you get the sense that what else is the Fed going to do? How much more can they do? They can't stop doing what they're doing now. And we're still not seeing uh, a clear shift in terms of the employment picture with which Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke said was important. So at this point, you know, is the Fed uh, well out of tools in the toolbox and has been for a while? Well, they still have tools in the toolbox. They could always do more quantitative easing, which if I told you that an hour ago would have seemed crazy. What, what does it do? It, it puts pressure, uh, downward pressure on long-term interest rates, weaken the, weakens the dollar. But I, you know, I do think you make a good point in terms of fiscal policy. The Fed alluded to in their statement that growth has been pretty good despite you know, tighter fiscal conditions, and that if those go away in this, toward the second half of this year, uh, beginning of next year, they expect growth to go higher. You know, that being said, I haven't, I'm not personally convinced that the economy really is an escape velocity. I think the Fed thinks that it is. Maybe now they're getting a little more concerned that we're growing, but not growing as fast as we need to.